In my last video on Parasite, I talked about the film's visual architecture, focusing on production design and the spatial layout of the world. I touched a bit on how cinematography was used to help create that structure, but there are many other ways that cinematography plays a significant role in shaping the story. So in this video, let's take a broader look at Parasite's cinematography, the use of camera movement and composition to help pace the film, keep us engaged, and illustrate its themes. This video is sponsored by Audible. In the first half of the film, as the Kim family moves deeper and deeper into their con, the camera consistently, slowly pushes forward. Almost barely perceptible in many of these shots, but easily noticeable if I speed it up, this slow creep forward gives each of these moments a foreboding sense of progression towards something. Once the Kims achieve their goal and have status in the house, the camera stops moving forward. Movement forward and backward becomes much more static and is only occasionally used through the rest of the film to emphasize specific moments. As the con develops, Bong Joon-ho uses visual cues to connect similar moments in the film. A slow pan marks the escalation of the con in both of these scenes. This slow pan was used at the beginning of the film when Min pitches the idea of conning the parks to Ki Woo. A similar pan is used again when Mr. Kim begins pitching his wife as a housekeeper to Mr. Park. Parasite only has about 960 shots, a bit below the average of 1,250, but the pacing of the film actually feels quite quick. In your average Hollywood film, you might see this scene progress like this, cutting between angles, but Bong often uses longer takes without cutting. These takes rarely feel very long because they aren't static. Bong uses developing composition and camera work to incorporate wide, medium, and close-up shots into a single take. Bong's immaculate storyboarding and shot planning allows him to use camera movement and blocking in concert to help develop scenes. In this scene, Mr. Park's movement towards the trash can is what motivates the horizontal camera dolly. But that movement continues and is what ends up revealing to the audience a new element of the scene. In the film, more free-flowing steadicam shots are used within the big house to emphasize the size of the space and the freedom in the rich family's lifestyle. In the Kim's house, shots are often more locked down and simple. But as the Kims start to see the benefit of their new jobs in their lives, the camera becomes freer and more complex in its movement. The film's static tripod shots, precise pans, steady dolly shots, and flowing steadicam tracking shots are exchanged for handheld shots at its climax. Though these shots are handheld and slightly more unsteady, they're no less precisely composed, often including multiple careful compositions in a single take. By reserving handheld for these moments, Bong maximizes its effect in contrast to the steadier cinematography of the rest of the film. Parasite's composition uses the set to help reinforce one of its themes. Parasite's 
내가 원래 선을 넘는 사람을 제일 싫어하는데 전반적으로 많은 행동이 선을 넘을 때날 뜻하면서도 결국엔 절대 선을 안 넘거든. 그건 좋아. 응. 인정. 그렇지. 근데 냄새가 선을 넘지 냄새가. 씨. None of these techniques were specifically pioneered by Bong Joon-ho, and Parasite isn't even the first time he's used most of them. But Bong displays a mastery and ease with the camera in bringing his vision to the screen that's admirable. There's clear intention behind every shot, but wonderfully, these things don't draw attention to themselves. Bong's long takes or well-choreographed tracking shots aren't there for show, but because they serve each moment of the story best. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. With a membership, you'll get one credit for an audiobook each month and two originals. You can spend your credit on any audiobook regardless of price. Get your first credit for free with your 30-day free trial when you go to audible.com slash thomasflight. One of your options for spending that credit is David Lynch's audiobook Catching the Big Fish. It's read by Lynch himself and it gives us an inside look into his creative process. If you don't like an audiobook, you can exchange it for another one. I like knowing that I can get a different audiobook if I change my mind because it makes me a lot more adventurous with the audiobooks I choose. You can start listening today with a 30-day Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible originals absolutely free. Visit audible.com slash thomasflight or text thomasflight to 500-500. Thank you so much for watching. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Each month I put out a podcast for my patrons. I go behind the scenes on why I make certain videos, talk more about the films I'm discussing in my essays, and just give a general overview of the things that I'm watching. 